This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome in to another edition of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Bartholomew. On this episode, a conversation with Rhode Island Representative Marcia Ranglin Vassal on the removal of and Providence plantations from the official name of the state of Rhode Island. So thank you so much for having me. I know we've been trying, you've been trying to have me on for a while. <laughs> yeah. So um, timing is everything, right? Sure is. So, Marcia Ranglin Vassal, and I am a um, state rep um, for House District 5. That is um, Elmer's, um, Wanscock, and um, Charles. And I was first elected um, in November 2016, and um, here I am. Well, let's get into one of the specific things that is amongst <laughs> a sea of activity over, look, this calendar year 2020 has been, I don't think anybody would have predicted where we are Uh, right now when when it was like, what, January, but something hyper-specific in in the midst of of recent events is revisiting the idea that Mm -hmm. we should remove of Providence and Providence plantations, pardon me, from the official name of the state of Rhode Island. Now, there's some people who have pushed back on that notion and have said, hey, look, first of all, in 2010, it was on the ballot. 77% of Rhode Islanders mm-hmm. rejected it. There's, I saw some Providence College professor try to explain that it has no connotation with slavery or something like mm-hmm. that. But the reality is there's no question mm-hmm. that it's time to remove it from the state name. I don't know if you could sort of elaborate on your work with that and, and, and where you stand today. So there's a... Um and amazing, I had a conversation with another radio personality um, back in January or maybe even last year. I got up one morning and I tweeted that um, it's about time we move um, plantations from our official state name. And that really set maybe an entire day of talk radio and maybe into the next day yeah. <laughs> of why we should not remove um, that. And um, so most people who say that, um, I think, don't have a keen understanding of what that means for Black people and people of um, African descent who are brought to the Americas, not the United States of America alone, but to the Americas. Um, We were enslaved. My ancestors were enslaved and brought and have worked on plantations all over the Americas, including um, Jamaica, where I am from. And I also want to use this opportunity to say that um, we are the only group of people, Black people, that is, who were actually brought um, to the New World enslaved to work on plantations, whether it be sugarcane or cotton or whatever. So I understand what connotation means. I also understand what denotation means, but also understand that if you're a black person or person of African descent, this is hurtful language. This is awful language. And so there's a movement across this country more so now to get rid of these symbols, whether they be monuments or whatever they are. And so I did a quick research when I was talking about um, removing the plantation name from our official slave name. And my research, um, from my research, there are no monuments per se in Rhode Island, but we have that plantation name. And every official document that I sign or anyone sign or you get, plantation is on that. And so every time that I see it, I'm in the state house, I'm at school, I get my degree or whatever, it's hurtful to me. It's hurtful to black people. It's hurtful to well-thinking and forward-thinking white people. And so I appreciate that we're having this conversation. And I wanna thank the legislators back then at a peak at the legislature um, that was introduced there, um, I believe 20, 2007 or 2009. I appreciate them bringing that forward at that time. And so in this moment where everyone is saying Black Lives Matters, right? 
And I just want to say that Black lives have always mattered. Have always mattered. It's not, it's not new. And so people who don't live and exist in a Black body and walk around being racially profiled, we walk in spaces where there's microaggression and they don't understand. I think they don't. Because if they did, they would have joined us and they would have said, you know what? It's time to remove that offensive, that racist, that awful name from, the, from our official state name. It has no value right now. It is, it is divisive. It is awful. And I can tell you there is never one moment that I have seen that word that it does not bring back my past. The people that were dragged and ripped from their homeland and brought to this country and to Jamaica and to the Americas. So let's get our conscience. This is imperative. Let's, let's, let's fight, let's speak about it, and let's all be outraged. And we need people who are going to join us and say, enough is enough. It is not just enough to say Black Lives Matters. Words have consequences, and those words have to actually must match the actions, what we do, the kinds of policies that we implement, how we use our privilege and privileges, let me say white privileges, to elevate the issues of black and brown people in Providence and all across Rhode Island and all across this world, quite frankly. It's shocking to me that there's just such a, a lack of empathy, first of all, on so many issues. It, it frankly, you know, my mind is blown with yeah. some of the ignorance I've, you know, I, I go back, I, I grew up in Southern Rhode Island. And yeah. look, a lot of that, ignorance comes from just a lack of experience. You know what I mean? Yes. Although there's, yeah. that's not an excuse, but as <laughs> you know, here we are in a connected world, you yes. know, in this day and age, I, I just can't wrap my head around that sort of ignorance and that lack of empathy. There's a petition yes. going around right now in mm-hmm. which, you know, the, the, basically a change.org petition to get yeah. rid of and Providence plantations from the state name. And some of the comments yeah. on there, the, de- the people who would defend <laughs> this as if it doesn't matter, I mean, these are the same folks who are probably, you know, mm-hmm. saying all lives matter or whatever it is, or, right. or you know, co- trying to compare right. looting with, with, with the peaceful protests. I mean, yes. mean-spirited, uh, borderline evil approach yeah. to reality. Uh, yeah. yes. How do we get out of this position right here? Because I can't believe that that's the majority of folks. Well, listen, um, I had a conversation with a woman yesterday, and... Um, she is actually in a, in a position of power and influence, the white woman. I, I, at first, I didn't know what to make of it, right? And so I think, well, and, and you should know if you followed me or if you've seen me or whatever, I have been speaking about systematic ro- racism, systemic racism, structural poverty, because those intertwine, right? I have been speaking about this since my election to the General Assembly. And every time I open my mouth to speak about these issues for the last four years, I, there is a, a cons, an effort, I think, to silence me. But I want everyone who's listening to know this, that I can't be silenced because I was at 14 years old I was demanding clean water in my own, in my country of Jamaica, in my community, where everyone was poor. So the issue of people not wanting to um, not believe that racism exists, right? I would encourage you all, I'm speaking to you directly, you should talk to Black people. You should talk to black men. You should talk to black women. You should talk to black children. Just talk to them and see what they go through every day. I want to share with you 
that the plantation may be just a word to you. It may be just a symbol to you. It may mean nothing to you. For people that look like me, it means everything. It means that our ancestors, their blood is in the ground and it cries from the ground every single day. It means that every single day, there are knees on our necks. And that is one of them. That is one of them. And so what I have been saying to people that I'm talking to is that I am not looking for allies. I am actually looking for disruptors. People that are willing to disrupt the status quo. People that are willing to say enough. People that are willing to, I've I've been talking to people who are even afraid to say the word, Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. There are people who are so afraid to say racism and race. Listen, if you're afraid to say that, then you become complicit. So, you know, I I, I tell you, this has been, since the the, the tragic murder of um, Mr. Floyd, This has been, first of all, it has opened up um, so many really sad memories for all of us black and brown people. And and we've seen this. And I can tell you, Bill, that most people are seeing this awful video for the first time. I live in a house with three young men and one black husband. Well, the boys are black too. And... (laughs) And so for years, every day they said, mommy, look at this video. I can tell you every single week, I see another video for years of another black man or woman being treated like Mr. Floyd or even worse. So this is not new for me. This is not new for me. Now it's new for a lot of people. So I hope in this moment that people are joining with us And they are saying, listen, this plantation thing may be really small for you, but for us, it's very hurtful and it's painful. And so we're asking you to use your privilege and to help us dismantle racism, to help us dismantle classism, to help us to dismantle those systems in place. And let me dare say, we're not going to dismantle these systems unless we vote people out that don't share the values of how all people should be treated with respect and dignity. And all people must be heard. And so the next time you get a mic, wherever platform you are, try to elevate Black women's voices. Don't join with the oppressor by silencing or trying to silence our voice. When you see racism or racist attitudes or racist words, be a disruptor and call that out. What it may mean, (laughs) as in my case, you're in the political doghouse, (laughs) right? What it may mean is that you, 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 you can be seen as a troublemaker, you can be seen as whatever, but know that you're doing the right thing. Know that your, your voice, I said to someone, a legislator, colleague of mine back in January, who ca- called me and s- said, how can I help you? This was back in January before we went back to the General Assembly. And I said, this is what you can do to help me. You can help to elevate the issues that I care about because the issues that I care about really matters to black and brown people. And if the bills that I've introduced over the last four years were passed, the numbers we would not have seen, I don't think we would have seen such morbid numbers with COVID-19. And I said to the person at the time, they respect you because you're white and you have privilege. They, the status quo, 
don't respect me and what I bring to the table because I'm black. I'm a black woman. <laughs> and I also carry angry black woman in my pocket. Black pocket. I say that all the time. But the truth of the matter is we must do better. We're better than this Rhode Island. And if we aren't better, we should try to be better. We should level the playing field for black and brown people who are working up to two jobs and they still can't make ends meet, struggling in poverty. We should level the playing field, use our voices and our privilege to ensure that people are not going back to work sick because they can't afford to stay home. We should use our privilege to ensure that women, black women, are not dying just trying to have a baby because black women are three to four times more likely to die in, in childbirth. So I urge you to call leadership, call the, your reps, call your senators and ask them to pass a doula bill. That's important. That's important. I urge you to look at the kinds of legislation that I have offered up for the last four years, to look at trauma. It's a bill that I've offered up for the last four years, to look at trauma that our children face. It's, on the, it's, 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 it's not heard yet. It's the Pass the Trauma-Informed Schools Act. If there's no other time that we need to pass that bill, it's now. Because our kids have been traumatized for so long, but more so now. So, you know, everyone who's listening, you have a platform, you have a voice. Please use it for the common good. It is not okay. And, 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 and it's not okay that every single official document that we get, and you get, you see, I hope that you get it too. It's hurtful, it's mean, it's racist, it's awful, and we should get rid of it now. I couldn't agree more. I'm 100% with you and I'm, I just can't wrap my head around anyone who is opposed to this and it's something that's going to happen immediately. The last thing I'll say here, I know we're on limited time, just a real quick, you know, last week, last Friday was one of the most powerful things I've ever experienced in Rhode Island, yeah. if not the most, 10,000 yeah. folks marching on the state house, a youth led rally. Yes. yes. And in the week since, nary a peep about that, but mm. we've heard about this Ali's Donut story on every news channel, you know, and look, regardless of your p- position on, on mm. the donut shop and getting rid of their police and military discount, whatever your, your position is, mm-hmm. another element of this, and I'm going to call out fellow members of the media right now, mm-hmm. are to elevate stories like this Providence Plantation story to the front mm-hmm. of the news past. And, Thank you. And, and knock it off with the, I just, I just invoke the governor there. I'll, I'll use a different, different phrase, you know, get away from the sensationalism here on, mm-hmm. on the back and forth about the donut shop. All right. You know, here we are a, a week later and we don't really hear about the rally that from my yeah. position was the largest protest in the history yes. of the state that yes. was organic youth led peaceful. Oh, yes. You know, frankly, gave me chills on multiple occasions, if not throughout the entire experience. Yeah, you know what I mean. And the result of something like that should be the immediate move to get rid of Providence Plantations as part of the yes. example. And here yes. we are, we the, the Twitter sphere, the newscasts focusing on a donut shop and the back and forth surrounding that. It's time for people to wake up and focused on the mm-hmm. tangible issues. We see the COVID yeah. data rolled out. And yes. I just asked the health department, you know, they, they give a nice word salad about the, the antibody yeah. data and so forth. What are the yeah. brick and mortar solutions that are yes. going to happen in Central Falls and South Providence to yes. make sure that health equity isn't something mm-hmm. that's being worked on, something that's yeah. in the plan. Yeah. June 2020, you know, answer the call of the 10,000 people that march yes. the state house peacefully. Yes. And that, that, that type of disruption needs to be amplified by everyone out there. Anyone who pushes mm-hmm. back on that to me yes. is, you know, exhibiting, they're a participant in systemic racism. So I just want to lay that out there. And I know you're on short time. I don't want to hold you, but if you want to respond yeah. to that in the last couple of minutes here, and then again, really appreciate you coming on. You know, um, last um, Friday I was there and my three sons was there and my husband was there and um, it was so powerful just seeing the youth 
and 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 the protesters and 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 looking at the signs and and just and feeling the energy it was it was just so powerful and that moment i don't know if it can be replicated i think it can grow to 20,000 people but you know i all i can say is you, people's actions and their words have to match if they don't match it don't it doesn't mean anything I am hopeful because I can feel the shift. I can feel the shift. I am seeing disruptors joining us with this movement. But I know that structural racism, structural poverty, systematic racism is laced in the DNA of this country. It is. So it's going to take a lot. But I believe in humanity. I believe in the goodness of people. And I also believe in the goodness of people to change. But we cannot stop. We cannot stop. We cannot rest on our laurels. We cannot become complacent. And we must hold people accountable as we hold ourselves accountable. So we heard the COVID data, the sad, the awful, I have lost people that I know to COVID. You might know people. I've lost people right here in my district to COVID. Those numbers are not just numbers. Those numbers, those numbers are real people. They're people that I know. They're people that you know. And it pained me a lot. Those, that first month, I didn't know what to do with myself. I even turned to Eden. And I'm not someone who turns to Eden because of anything. I turned to eating, eating food, just eating everything that I saw. Because I was so angry. And I needed to channel that anger somewhere. And I needed to channel it for the common good to elevate people and to lift people up. And so I started exercising and walking and dancing because I find that to be a part of the resistance because you've got to put your mask on literally and figuratively speaking first. You've got to take care of yourself. It angered me that we had so many opportunities to do the right thing in Rhode Island and to create policies and legislation that impact black people and brown people and poor white people. And we didn't do it. I am hopeful. I am very hopeful that our words, political leaders, their words, senators and representatives, that their words will matter with their actions. And when we get back to passing bills, we can pass bills that will radically change the trajectory of people's lives. Because no one should die because they're poor. No one should die because they're black or brown. No one should die. And I'm so thankful for you offering me this space where I can share with your listeners how I feel. And I am not going to stop. It doesn't matter the pushback that I get. I am never going to stop because I know that I stand on the shoulders of giants. And I know for me to be sitting at this table and to be talking to you is because my ancestors survived that transatlantic trade that brought my ancestors to Jamaica. And now I am in Providence, Rhode Island. I hope and I pray that we can remove once and for all plantations from the official state name. So thank you. Let's keep going. 
Thank you, Rep. You are a tremendous leader in this state and, you know, just a, such a welcome voice in, in the Rhode Island community. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. And thank you. Thank you so much for taking time today. I know, by the way, you're also a teacher, so that's a whole other discussion for another day. You've got to get back to distance learning right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm actually in break now. So thank you oh, so good. much for having me. I really appreciate it. And thanks for all that you do. This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Discover over 200 other episodes of the Bartholomew Town Podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, ripodcast.com or wherever you like to get audio. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com slash employers.